I wanted to wrap it up by asking um, each of the panelists, um, just, you know, if, if you have a, an idea of some of the key trends that are currently affecting the alternative data industry um, that are really the catalysts for the future where we might see things five years from now, if you had to come up with um, one key trend, one key takeaway um, for the industry, what would be, let's start with Evan, because you've been in this industry probably the longest. I mean, I think the most interesting development really is around the ability to customize data, which really is a function of sort of AI tooling and the ability for a person to take their interpretation and through technology, put their own spin on something that previously wouldn't have been easy to do. It used to be you got data from people and everybody got the same data set and that's what you got. And now the fact that you can put it through a filter that doesn't necessarily require all the technical skill, it doesn't require you to be a data scientist necessarily, it doesn't require you to be an expert, but can put your own individualized spin on something for any given investor is really, really, really powerful because it means as many investors with as many views have as many different ways to take a data set and turn it into something useful. They may be right, they may be wrong, but it's their view and presumably that's why the people are giving them money to invest. So I think that's by far the most interesting development I've seen. Yeah, I think we see some developments from, from technology point of view because alternative data and the numerous source of alternative data and the usage that you want to have, they're not scalable. So there is a lot of still work we discussed with the panel to download, to understand, to clean, to verify a hypothesis, to test the strategy. Right? So it requires a lot of effort. And especially if you deal with thousands of data sources with, with which you have must have separate legal agreements and so on, it becomes really a, a jungle that you have to manage. And I think for us to, to, to push the usage of alternative data to the next level, uh, we need some breakthroughs in, in that, that, that. And, and I think it, it's coming. The second aspect is also uh, methodology. You know, everybody speaks about LLMs now and uh, chat GPT. Unless you don't put in your investment deck, uh, you know, chat GPT, you don't raise money. We had troubles because we didn't want to put LLMs because in the end, if you're an investor, you care about predictions, so you care about time series, okay? It's useful to have chat GPT to summarize your documents, and that's absolutely fine. It's, 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 it's really a lot of operational alpha, as they call it, savings. But when it comes to investment, you have to predict the time series, and language models are not made for that. And when it comes to this type of methodology, working with big data, uh, time series, you know, I think we'll see things coming. So now everybody's focused on, on LLMs and, and time series are under the radar. But in the end, this is what we need as investors. We need to predict what will happen with some variables, you know, next month, two months, three months, uh, and so on. Time series LLM. I'll take these two points that Evan and, and uh, Alice uh, expressed and I'll combine them. Um, something may be a little bit controversial, but, but from economic perspective, it, it makes total sense. Um, even if you don't find the data that you need, uh, the technology today uh, enables you to start collecting that data yourself um, with a relatively low barrier to entry or find someone whom you will incentivize economically to collect the data for you, which means you're coming up with uh, additional sources of data um, that you define if you see enough economic value to, to test your hypothesis. I think this is uh, going to be, that's going back to customizable data sets and private data sets. Okay, so I'm the last one. I need to say something bold and smart. Uh, I, I think that especially, again, like in my industry, we are living right now like the renaissance of data. I mean, like we are in the same spot that edge funds were like 20 years ago. So statement number two is everyone will be like a data-driven investor in 10 years time. There is no other way to do this job in 10 years that is not using alternative data in different source and degrees. Um, does that mean that everyone is going to be a programmer or a coder? No, at all. So there are like more and more tools these days that are going to allow like these people that don't know how to code to use alternative data in a better way and get some value out of it. Um, I, I, I think like the more interesting question that I'm going to leave open because I'm not sure that I have like an answer yet is how much of technical talents does really needs to reside in a fund 
in 10 years time to be even more competitive? Or is this like commodization of tools and GPT and LLM and, you know, whatever you want to put like in this big mix, is that really going to like, you know, level up the, uh, the field? Thank you. So personally, I think that the most impactful trend um, that's been happening is the it, it is the availability of talented people more so than technology that have the experience of working with um, the the budding field of alternative data uh, as it's maturing and um, it's that sort of um, deep expertise um, that is becoming more prevalent across the industry that is really you know going to take this maturing sector to the next stage of its evolution. So with that, um, please give everybody a hand and uh, that's it.